If this is what your daily driver looks like, then congratulations, you did it. They weren't kidding. All it took to rise the top was giving life that extra 110% of extra dedication and hard work. The world was your oyster, the day yours to seize, and a trust fund to lend a helping hand. We know you didn't really need that though, you rockstar you. While most insurance providers won't cover it out of fear of bankruptcy, you don't actually need to strike oil or become heir to the throne to get yourself some keys to an overflood. That's because today's market is more exploitable than ever before. Create your own crypto scheme to confuse dense celebrities and federal governments for billions of real dollars. Upload reaction videos and sell merch to kids online. Take credit for other people's inventions and patent them. Start a podcast. Just kidding, don't do that, the world's got enough of those. Become a social media influencer and market yourself getting hashtag cancelled. Get with a grift and start living the grind set of a true Sigma Alpha Omega male. Here's the newest iteration of the same hypercar we've been seeing for nearly a decade now. But this time, it means business, dammit. The Swedish company has always seemed to fit that jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none archetype. The last couple of times Overflod tried to replicate its breakout success with the XF were caught up somewhere between mesmerizing and mundane. Its second attempt tried to bridge the gap between starting grids and downtown intersections as the Autark. A decent looking and performing vehicle, yet it excels at neither purpose it was adapted for. The Tyrant was designed as a beautiful status symbol first, and a car second. It turns out nobody is interested in how much your exhaust tip is worth when your product is bulkier than a pickup truck and slower than the previous product. It's best if we forget this one. The Swedes even gave their best shot at an electric sports car, which was impressive. It gave customers the warm fuzzy feeling of saving the planet, which is nearly as impactful as switching your banking statements to paperless. Now it seems the new kid in the block has come back with their third iteration of their flagship, the Entity MT. Is it fast? Depends on how much money you want to put into it. Does it handle better than the last one? Barely. The best way to describe the MT at high speeds is like dancing with a hungry polar bear. Firmly planted and very powerful, but totally unpredictable. At a moment's notice, you'll be ripped to shreds eons before your life has a chance to flash before your eyes. Unlike some manufacturers who feel too self-important to grant their customers with hood privileges, Overflood lets you explore every inch of its naturally aspirated V8 powerhouse. If you've already signed your final will and testament, there's a package for the MT that boasts an optional third-stage turbo kit and a race-spec engine upgrade. The biggest downfall with the MT is that it shares the same fate as the XXR. Both cars are shackled to a transmission with the consistency of a prison suit. You can put the hammer down and the MT will scream to the heavens yet it never seems to conjure enough torque to go much faster. Some say the suspension affects the entity's performance in some way or another, meaning Overflot built these cars to perform in a simulation rather than the bumpy roads of the real world. On the interior front, there's not much. By design, of course. Save for the diamond weave frunk, which is intended to hold your roof, but it's also the perfect size for fitting half a suitcase or a small lunchbox. With regards to design, I could rattle on for two minutes about each aggressive intake, body curvature, and elegant swooping cabin space, but I don't think I need to. Truth is, you don't need convincing to buy this car. You've already made your mind up. If you were only concerned with track performance, you would have moved on to an Emirates or a Krieger by now. You're just making excuses for yourself. 